The start of the season could not have went any more perfect. JMU opened up the season against Tennessee at Tennessee. They walked out of there with a huge win, one of the biggest in their program's history, and then now they moved in to be a top 10 team opening this week at the number six squad. Now, while things might be a little bit easier, they aren't too easy. BYU has a tough team. They like to air it out. They're number 18 in the nation. So if we can win today and a team in the top five can lose, it's pretty likely we can move into the top five. But we don't want to get ahead of ourselves just yet. So as we take a look at the top 25, you can see Notre Dame, Oregon, and Ohio State are your top three teams, followed by UCLA and Alabama. That's a strong top five squads. But again, we're right there on the outside. We've got a pretty decent chance to move into the top five. If not this week, then hopefully in the weeks to come. But rounding out everybody else, you can see Tennessee move down to number 10. You see Clemson, Virginia Tech, they're also in your top 15, BYU at 18, and your number 25 team would be Miami, who ended up losing an FAU, which is a bit surprising. In terms of your Heisman watch, Mike Weber is your top guy right now, followed by Damian Harris, Miles Gaskin, Tanner Magum, and then Dexter Williams. So we have to be careful because BYU has a senior quarterback who's very good, had five touchdowns last week, can also run the ball, and he's in the running for the Heisman, so he has a lot to lose. Something to also note is that JMU has three major prospects already visiting this early in the season. They have a wide receiver, they have an athlete who more than likely will play somewhere in the secondary if he does sign with JMU, and they have Caleb Cole who's a major defensive end prospect. All of these guys are four stars or greater. JMU needs a major win today. And here go the JMU dudes getting the squad hyped up. It's a major showdown versus BYU. The good news is JMU is playing at home, so they can open this up with a major win. Again, that top five spot is right there for the taking. Now Joe Disher is coming out of here two times touchdowns last week, nearly 250 passing yards, a good debut for him to start his season. Now JMU comes out in shotgun this time, we've got Joe Disher waiting for something in the back. He doesn't see what he likes, so he's going to scramble a little bit. Look at Joe Disher moving out a little bit, takes a hit at the line, but he ends up getting that first down. Now after getting their first down, it looks like JMU's going to try a little bit of a trick play. A wide receiver reverts this time to Sean McMahon. Sean McMahon finds a little bit of room, but not enough. Gets three yards on that carry. Now the Dukes are lining up with five receivers out there, so what is what are they going to find? They got a guy across the middle, they throw it in, look at Clayton Smith, the 99 speed guy, is going to hold that one in for a 23 yarder. Joe Disher is looking pretty efficient so far in this drive, a good play action fake, and the blitz comes through heavy, he takes a sack after looking really good, the offensive line looks pretty bad on that play. So after a huge sack there by BYU, JMU comes out on third and 17, what was once a promising drive is looking a little suspect, and that pass is thrown into traffic, nearly intercepted, and JMU is going to be forced to punt. So the JMU defense is coming out looking to stop this senior quarterback who has been terrorizing teams all season long. And they throw one out here. Branch is going to try to tackle him, but he can't get it. McClendon ends up forcing him out of bounds. JMU over the years has definitely struggled with a passing attack, so they're going to need something big today to stop this. And they end up going for the run. Oh, it's actually a fake. They're going to run this one. The quarterback is scrambling like crazy. Branch ends up wrangling him up, but still 10 yards on that carry. Now BYU moves on to the hurry up offensive sign. They go to the fake run again. Look at this. King Ortiz is going to try to wrangle up the quarterback. He can't. He throws Branch off. This quarterback is a machine. Now, first and ten as BYU has already moved pretty quickly over here into the territory for JMU. They're going to try to wrangle him up. They missed the tackle. They go in for the last guy. That one misses too. And Steven Richards goes 36 yards into the end zone. A major play by BYU to strike first. On their first drive of the game, the JMU offense started off extremely strong and then completely fell by the wayside. They're going to try to pick things up here with the halfback screen. Cameron King's got some room. He's going to try to turn the field. He's got a little bit of edge here. He's going to run through a couple of defenders, and he gets a major play, 24 yards there, to get the first down and to give this offense some spark. Now lining up for what looks like a read option, they're going to hand it off to Cameron King. He's going to force his way through and just does skirt enough to get that first. With four wide receivers and one running back, Disher again moves back to the play action fake. It's been working fairly good today, but he's going to scramble. He's got a guy wide open downfield. He throws it. Drew Coates is going to make an amazing one-handed grab, I believe, on that play. 46 yards. What a play by Drew Coates, stepping up for his team and great awareness by Joe Disher. Look at the throw again on the run. Drew Coach kind of outruns it a little bit. At the last second, he turns around, catches it one-handed. What an amazing grab to make this game even up at seven. Now, BYU absolutely decimated the JMU defense on that very first drive. So it's time the JMU defense steps it up, gets a couple of plays here, and a nice hit on that guy across the middle but he still holds on to it. Now, second and 10 for BYU, which looks like they're lining up in the pistol. They're gonna hand this one actually off. It's actually gonna be a decent carry as he bowls over multiple defenders for JMU. While the JMU offense has played pretty well, especially in that last drive, you have to wonder, did the JMU defense actually come to play today? Now, they miss multiple times. They bite hard on the fake for the running back, and the quarterback takes it for a first. Now, first and 10 as they're nearing, looks like the first down marker. Curtis Holmes is going to come off the edge. He's got a decent chance at a blitz. He goes in. We're going to try to get the interception. Charles Tuck can't get it, but whoa. Trey Dye is absolutely upended by number 22. What a hit. 
BYU is doing the best job they have ever done so far against JMU by chewing this clock at an incredible rate. Now, Tanner Magnum's a little bit flustered here. He ends up throwing one for another first down, running around like Johnny Manziel in that backfield. Now, JMU has their backs against the wall now as they're inside. Looks like the 10-yard line. Smallwood surveying the middle. He's looking for anything to stop here. Magnum's going to throw one on a slant, and he does find Conley, or excuse me, Carey, for an 8-yard gain. Now, JMU is looking to send somewhat of a blitz here. They'll see if they can get some pressure on Magnum. Well, second and two, they're going to get the blitz over. It's like a read option. He's going to cut up the field, but they do drop him just shy of the marker to make it third and one. Now, this is a huge play. Third and one. Can they force a field goal here and end up being okay? The running back's going to take it. No, Ortiz is going to wrap up the quarterback. What a fake by BYU. And JMU steps up on third down to force a field goal. So BYU is lining up for the field goal. It would be a miracle if JMU could block it. It would be the first block field goal of the entire career for JMU and this one is unfortunately going to be good. Now there's a new set of drives for JMU as they got a little bit of a first. They're going to look for something. They've got Jordan Dodson wide open. They throw it but it's out of bounds. A great route by Dodson but an unfortunate throw by Joe Disher. Now Joe Disher has no one in the backfield to protect him. He's going to roll out to his right hand side a little bit. He's got a guy. He throws it. That one is going to be caught to make it third and one. So third and one. They're going to opt to run the ball here. Jamie's going to hand it off to Cameron King who's got all the room in the world. He's going to move his way through his longest run of the day. 14 yards for Cameron King. A great first down by JMU. The JMU offense is looking balanced as ever today, but unfortunately, Joe Gishra is going to get hit in the backfield. Can't get rid of it. Had no protection. I mean, zero protection there. So third and 17, a whole lot of yards for JMU to get today. The play action fake is there. They've got a guy wide open across the middle. It's Henry Castle. He's running. They're going to bring him down from behind. It looks like the 13, but a 37-yard gainer there. Again, Joe Disher's favorite play happens to be anything with play action. He sells it incredibly well, and he finds Henry Castle for the first down. JMU has been milking the clock. All, all quarter long. They're going to hand this one off to Cameron King. He's going to look to find some room. He goes up the middle end. They say he's down at the one yard line. Another great attempt by Cameron King. So with the ball on the one yard line, they're going to opt. It looks like run the ball. A heavy package is in the game. They're going to hand it off to Cameron King, and he goes into the end zone completely untouched. JMU has taken the lead for the very first time of the afternoon. They held BYU to the field goal, and now they get a touchdown to make it a 14-10 ball game pending the extra point. Now, BYU is behind for the first time in the game, and they definitely want to do something about it. So, Evans is going to be in motion. They're going to have a heavy blitz coming. They throw this ball. Looks like Oliver is the only guy there, but he can't make the tackle. Branch can't make the tackle. Can anyone tackle a BYU player? This man is off to the run. The fullback goes all the way down to the 20-yard line. How did that happen? Now, BYU stays with the hurry-up offense now. Richards moves in motion to the left. They're going to send another heavy blitz. Looks like the quarterback's going to try to keep it, but Smallwood is going to wrap him up and says, you're going nowhere on that play. Now it's third and 13 for BYU. They have a lot of yards to give up, so JMU backs up in heavy pass protection now. They're looking for anything to stop here. They end up going to an underneath round. Can they actually make a tackle? They can't get the first one, but they make it fourth and seven. Another good stop by JMU to force the field goal. So fourth and seven, BYU lines up for this field goal. JMU's going to try to block it. It's going to be close, and that one is going to just sneak in to the right-hand side of the uprights. Now with a minute 19 left in the clock and all of their timeouts, JMU can easily go down here and get a field goal for their squad. So Joe Disher's rolling out. He's scrambling. He's got what possibly could be Joe Dodson. I mean, it's Jordan Dodson, and Jordan Dodson is going to be open for a first. So again, lining up in shotgun, Joe Disher's going to take the snap. He's got Jordan Dodson wide open. He's going to find Jordan Dodson, who does get the catch and the first. So with a minute four left, JMU is nearly at the midfield marker. Anything is possible here as they scramble around. They've got a guy wide open again. They throw it deep. Who do they have this time? It's Drew Coates again. He's finding ways to get open. 45 yards. Call him Drew Big Play Coates because, again, Joe Disher scrambles around. Drew Coates never stopped running his rounds. Look for his quarterback, and Joe Disher was able to find him for a 40 Five yard strike as the safety bit up just a little bit too much on that play. So inside the goal line, about 45 seconds left. Disher takes the snap. He's looking for something, anything. He sees Steven Weldon deep. Steven Weldon gets a touchdown. The cornerback, who also sometimes plays wide receiver, gets a touchdown. I believe that could be his first receiving touchdown of his career, or at least his second. But what a major play, his first of the season. So going into halftime, again, JMU with an eight-point lead. BYU is trailing. JMU just needs to keep the pressure on. BYU gets the ball at the start of the half, so the defense has to play well. So Steven Weldon is going to line up deep for the punt return. He's going to see it way back. Looks like about the 20 or 25. He's going to field this one to the right. Moves back out to the left-hand side. He's got some room here. Steven Weldon's trying to make some guys move. A couple of guys closing in on him. He's going to get wrapped up at the 45, it looks like. But an incredible return to start the drive. Now, if you're JMU, you definitely want to take some time off of the clock. So expect the running game to be heavily evolved here in the second half. Now, Cameron King goes for his first attempt of the drive, and it only goes for two. 
Oh, Ditcher lines up with King in the backfield again. The play action fake. The read. He's got a couple of guys near him. He's trying to outrun this guy behind him. He is going to skate around for the first down. He gets some great blocking here. He jukes back inside, but forces out of bounds after getting about 20 or so yards on that carry. There's a play for JMU that has been dicey. It has been this wide receiver option screen. So they're going to see what they can do. Castle's in the backfield. They fake that one. They pitch this one. They've got pretty good success with it so far. Henry Castle does get the first down on the eight yard rush. So it's all good on that one. Inside the red zone now, Joe Disher makes a little bit of a play adjustment. He's got a guy wide open to Jordan Dawson. Dawson's going to turn up the field and look at Jordan Dawson. This man was the biggest playmaker in terms of wide receivers last year, or excuse me, the tight ends. But he was a monster last season. He's starting to get things turning as he gets another touchdown here this afternoon. The second half has been way better than the first half for the JMU Dukes. This is a team that believes they can get to the national championship. And winning games like this one today are what it's all about. Now, this unfortunately is not looking great on this carry as Magnum goes out for about 11 or so yards. But it's also important for JMU not to get ahead of themselves here. They want to make sure they finish this game strong. So Ortiz is trying to come in on the blitz. Cole is going to go in to try to tackle him. No one can tackle this receiver. Can anyone get to him? Charleston Jr. forces him out of bounds finally. So JMU's going to switch to a cover three now. They're expecting the pass fully. They're looking for any of these underneath routes. They end up going for a halfback screen. JMU is not ready for this. Oliver's going to try to get him. Branch forces him out of bounds, and BYU lives to fight on another drive. So here we go, JMU, inside the red zone. This is where your backs are against the wall. They've done so well so far on this. Small was going to try to stop him. They end up forcing the guy to not pitch the ball. It's important to watch that guy on the left, and they did. Again, BYU is looking to convert here. We're watching the run or the handoff inside. Small was going to get the blitz coming. A great pickup by BYU. BYU and they throw it out to the left that is going to be a touchdown Martin Brown gets a six yard catch and just like that BYU is right back in this game so JMU is back on a drive where they're only up eight points now they need at least a field goal on this drive and a great kick return look at this now I mean, excuse me a great wide receiver return and Sean McMahon could have nearly broken that one for a touchdown but still gets 13 yards play action fakes this afternoon have been money for JMU so they try another one here we've got a couple of options again Joe Disher's offensive line is breaking down incredibly poorly so he's going to get another for the first and smartly gets out of bounds. Now Jamie with a new set of downs again is looking for anything. They see Jordan Dotson across the middle. They're going to thread the needle. Another good pass by Joe Bisher connecting with Jordan Dotson. So we head into the fourth quarter. There is one quarter left to play in this ball game. An eight-point lead for JMU, a tough BYU squad. Can they hold on to this lead? If nothing else here, JMU needs to make sure they have a field goal. So no turnovers in this territory. Now Disher sees something. He's got a little bit of a break here in the defense, and he gets it to Drew Coates, who is dropped at the one. Could have been a touchdown if you ask me, but BYU can't believe it. Another clutch catch. So JMU was trying to make it a two-score ball game. They're going to hand it off again to Cameron King, and what a play by the offensive line. He goes in completely untouched. Should have been a late hit there at the end if you ask me but again another touchdown for the sophomore if there's anything on that the JMU defense can be happy about there's under four minutes left the clock is ticking and BYU is still down two scores if they can keep making them waste the clock they should be okay here but look at Magnum again this dude is a bowling ball just wrecking his way through JMU second and seven out BYU is looking for the drive we got to watch for the option they fake the option they're looking to go deep instead they go out to the edge Charles Tuss going to try to come in for the tackle Richards is forced out of bounds by Rashad Jean Jr but eight yards for the first Second and three, just over three minutes left in the afternoon. Weeks is going to move in motion. Looks like another QB option, and they go up the middle. Magnum is literally out here like Tim Tebow, rushing, passing, and he wears the same number. So Jamie was planning to throw a little bit of a blitz here at the quarterback to try and get him a little angry. They're going to try to get some pressure in here. Lewis is going to miss, but Smallwood is going to make the tackle for a loss of a yard. While the JMU defense hasn't really been that great everywhere, they have been great in the red zone. So let's see if they can make another stop here today. The running back is going out to the edge. Branch is going to miss. Oliver is going to miss. Rashad Jean Jr. stops him. But unfortunately, Jake Evans is going to roll into the end zone. BYU is going to make this a one-score game after this extra point attempt. But BYU is getting a little bit risky. They're saying, you know what, we're not going to the extra point we're going for this two-point conversion so Fisher's going to be the lone guy back everyone else is in man coverage they're going to look to stop him here but no Evans goes in everyone goes to the outside and BYU cuts it to a seven point game so with two minutes and 31 seconds left BYU has all their timeouts JMU needs to just make sure they get first downs and this team will be okay but a horrible first start as they lose a yard in the backfield so on second and 11, they're going to opt to go to the halfback screen. It's worked. BYU fell for it again. Cameron King's looking for something. He's going to get to the outside. Cameron King is going to stretch it a little bit more. Jukes back inside. Looks like he stays in bounds to me. And another good play to force BYU to use their timeout. Now, mathematically, BYU is still in this game. They have a timeout left. There's two minutes and nine seconds left. JMU just has to keep running the ball, wasting the clock, and forcing BYU to use their timeouts as they use their last one here. 
And with that, JMU is going to get a major W, their first home game of the season. They're going to walk out with a win. Joe Disher threw for over 300, ran for over 40, and had three touchdowns in the afternoon. A great performance by him, a great performance by Cameron King, and the JMU defense let it out there in the second half with a remarkable performance. In terms of the stats this afternoon, Joe Disher again threw for over 300, had three passing touchdowns, a 75% completion rate, and only got sacked twice. In the rushing game, Cameron King was just under 100 yards with 97 total yards, two rushing touchdowns. Disher had 40, McMahon had 16, and Henry Castle had 8. On the receiving side of things, Jordan Dodson showed up major today, six catches for 73 yards and a touchdown, with Drew Coates getting four big-time catches for 121, Cameron King with 51, and a couple of other guys, including Steven Weldon, had a reception with Weldon's first receiving touchdown of the season. On the defensive side, Robert Branch let us out here from the free safety spot with seven total tackles. We saw Smallwood, Ortiz Jr., Rashad Robinson had some major hits, and Rashad Jean Jr. nearly killed a man out there. The lone sack today was from Rashad Robinson, and then in terms of interceptions, we had literally not a single one. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Let's go for 500 likes in today's video. Check the playlist on the screen, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.